Hi, I'm Tony Dietrilisi. And I'm Holly Black. And we're the creators of... <laughs> the Spider-Wick Spider Chronicles. Chronicles. Celebrating 20 years, Holly. 20, 20 years! years. Since the first book came out. How did that happen? It is truly amazing to me. It really oh does my seem gosh. like a very short time ago that we were sitting around in your old apartment talking about what might happen. It's crazy. I mean, I think of back on on those times, those days where we were we were thinking about all of our favorite things like Dungeons and Dragons, Brian Froud and Alan Lee's Fairy Fairies Fol book that we love, the Fairy, Fairy folklore. folklore that you were so into, and the fact that we were able to create this series of books and that people still love these stories 20 years later. It means a lot. It means a lot. It's really awesome. So we thought to celebrate, you're going to read. I'm going to read a little bit of book two this is the seeing stone yep this is a little bit of a creepy part where <laughs> the kids come across a troll and so if you are a new reader you'll get a little taste of the books and if you are an older reader mm -hmm. you can revisit a really fun part that's right and you're going to do something really special maybe draw the scene as you're reading it so we hope you enjoy this excerpt from Spiderwick Chronicles, book two, The, the Seeing, Seeing Stone. Stone. <laughs> oh, look at that. Perfect <laughs> harmony. So good. 20 years. The patches of sunlight filtering through the trees became tinged with orange. Up ahead, the stream widened where it ran under the remains of a stone bridge. Jared could feel his skin prickle as they got closer to the rubble, but there was no sign of goblins. The stream was very wide, almost 20 feet across, and there was a darkness in the middle that seemed to speak of deep water. Jared heard a distant sound like metal grating against metal. Mallory stopped, looked across the water, and raised her head. Did you hear that? Could it be Simon? Jared asked. He hoped it wasn't. It didn't sound human at all. I don't know, Mallory said, but whatever it was, it's got something to do with those goblins. Come on. With that, Mallory bounded in the direction of the noise. Don't go in there, Mallory, Jared said. It's too deep. Don't be a baby, she said, and waded into the stream. She made two long strides and then dropped as though she had stepped off the edge of a cliff. Dark green water closed over her head. Jared lunged forward, dropping his rapier onto the bank. He plunged his hand into the icy cold water. His sister bobbed to the surface, sputtering. She grabbed for his arm. He had pulled her halfway onto the bank when something began to surface behind her. At first, it seemed like a hill rising from the water, stony and covered in moss. Then a head emerged, the deep green of rotten river grass with small eyes, a nose that was gnarled like a branch, and a mouth full of cracked teeth. A hand reached toward them. Its fingers were long as roots, and its nails were black with murk. Jared breathed in the stench of the bottom of the pool, putrid leaves and old, old mud. He screamed. His mind went completely blank. He couldn't move. Mallory pulled herself the rest of the way onto the bank and looked over her shoulder. What is it? What do you see? At her voice, Dar Jared snapped into moving and stumbled woodenly away from the stream, tugging her along with him. Roll, he gasped. The creature lunged after them. Long fingers dragged through the grass just short of where they were. Then the creature howled and Jared looked back, but he couldn't see what had happened. It felt toward them again, but jerked away when one long finger fell into a beam of light. The monster bellowed. The sun, Jared said. It got burned by the sun. There's not much sun left, Mallory replied. Let's go. Wait, the monster whispered. Its voice was soft. Yellow eyes regarded them steadily. Come back. I have something for you. The troll extended a closed hand as though something might indeed be clutched in its palm. Jared, come on, Mallory's voice was almost pleading. I can't see what you're talking to. Have you seen my brother, Jared asked? Perhaps. I heard something a time ago, but it was bright, too bright to look. That was him. It must have been. Where did they go? The head swung toward the remnants of the bridge and then looked back at Jared. Come closer and I will tell you. Jared took a step back. No way. At least come get your sword. The troll gestured to the rapier beside itself. The sword was lying on the bank where Jared had dropped it. He looked over at his sister. Her hands were empty too. She must have left her sword at the bottom of the pool. 
Mallory took a half step forward. That's the only weapon we have. Come and take it. I will close my eyes if it will make you feel safer. One huge hand covered its eyes. Mallory looked at the sword in the mud. Her eyes focused on it in a way that made Jared very nervous. She was thinking about trying for it. You can't even see the thing, Jared hissed. Let's go. But the sword. Jared untied the eyepiece and held it out to her. Her face went pale at the sight of the massive creature peeking through a gap in its fingers, imprisoned only by the fading patches of sunlight. Come on, she said shakily. No, called the troll. Come back. I'll even turn around. I'll count to ten. It'll be a fair chance. Come back. Oh, man, Holly, I love when you read. Your troll voice is on point. <laughs> it's very natural. So good. Yes, natural yes, me. yes. Take a <laughs> swig of coffee. <laughs> troll voice. It's amazing to watch you draw, though. Like, it is like magic every Aww. time. It's incredible. I mean, it, it, it's something we never get to see. Like, it feels like really seeing behind the scenes. Oh, thank you. You know, probably, you know, when I think of it, our working relationship on these books was unusual in that we were often together talking about stuff and I would be sketching ideas and concepts mm -hmm. that I, I didn't even know the story part, but you would be inspired by it mm -hmm. and you figured out ways to integrate it into the story. And that's, that's always one of my favorite memories is is the way, we, and I remember even on um, Arthur Spiderwick's Field Guide, you I brought up the files in like Photoshop and you were just writing in all the nooks and crannies. It was like, I felt like we were making something really special. It was really a really, it was a really, really weird and interesting and fun uh, collaborative relationship. I remember writing stuff and then seeing what you drew and it would change how I saw the scene yeah. and I would rewrite it. Yeah, yeah. And I definitely remember you being like, hey, can this guy go in there? So yeah. And I was like, where? I had a wish where? list. I had a wish list. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, speaking of drawing, over the years, Holly, I, I know you've probably received these as well as I have. Some amazing fan mail from from uh, readers all over the world who have sent their own drawings of either the Spiderwick characters or fairies that they've seen. Mm -hmm. I, I know you probably get get people who tell you stories. I definitely have. But do you remember we also used to bring a book around with a us? A red we book. We had this red book and people would tell us um, their fairy experiences. And I think we thought it would be kids. Yes. But it was a lot of people. It yes. was booksellers. It was teachers. It was parents who would come. And, uh, you know, we started out loving folklore and loving the idea that there were fairies out there, but actually meeting people who had those experiences was incredibly special. Super rich. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. So thank you. Thank you, new readers who are checking us out here. Thank you to old readers who stuck with us. Thank you so much. It means so much to us. Thank you so much for making these past 20 years so amazing. Here's to 20 more years. Cheers.